All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about the fundamentals of biology here. I'm just going over some of the core aspects and kind of the foundational components of biology, but then applying all of that to marine biology and the basics, how they apply in the marine world with species that live in the marine environment, completely in the marine environment, but also species that are kind of transitional, partly on land, partly in the marine environment. Okay, so this should be a review over any general biology course you guys have had, so it shouldn't be anything crazy and new, but just wanting to make sure that your foundation of biological knowledge is solid so then we can apply this stuff to the marine world. So, all right, so basic life. Life in the sea, some features of all life, but life in the sea. Four main features here. Life is organized. Cellular, you know, they start out the molecular to the cellular to the tissue level to the organ level and all the way up. And we'll see this in a little bit. I have a slide of the organizational hierarchy of living things. All life uses energy. Bottom line, I don't care what you are, if you're alive, you're using energy in some form, in some fashion. And we'll talk about the differences, and we'll look at groups of organisms that are producers versus consumers, the different types of consumers, and so on. Every living organism runs metabolism, has a metabolic rate, its ability to convert energy into a form that is usable for that particular organism. And all living things maintain homeostasis. Now, the homeostasis aspect is a tough one because of how life or how the environmental conditions change. So if you're living in the ocean, you have to be able to maintain homeostasis in a salt environment. What about if you're right on the shore and as the tide goes out and the tide comes in, your salt concentrations change dramatically? Okay, so homeostasis is going to be a big, big thing when we start talking about different groups of marine organisms. All right, so basic features of life. Now, there's essential building blocks that make up all living things. Organic molecules or biomolecules come in four groups. These are going to be molecules made up of primarily carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen components, and then other things attached to those structural groups. So the four organic molecules you should be filling in the blanks here with are carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. Okay, so basic food groups. Think about food, basic chemistry from an earlier biology course. Same ideas here. Now carbs, carbs are used for energy. That's the primary function of most carbohydrates, a form of energy for the organism. Some of them, some carbs, some forms of carbohydrates are used to store energy. Things like starch. Starch is a big complex carbohydrate that is found in plants and different algae as a form of stored energy. Uh, so, <clears throat> some of them, some of the carbs are used as structural molecules. Things like cellulose. Cellulose is found in plants and seaweed. It's a key component of their cell walls. And then we have a thing called chitin which is found in the shells of marine animals like crabs and lobsters. We see it in fungi as well. Okay, so those are some of the key carbohydrates we're going to be talking about and looking at as we explore the marine ecosystem. Proteins. Proteins have a huge list of functions, but the main ones I want you guys to focus on are the enzymes. Enzymes are protein-based structures. Enzymes accelerate chemical reactions in the body. They help speed up and facilitate these chemical reactions. Hormones. Hormones act as chemical messengers. So how does the organism know it's time to reproduce? Making eggs, making sperm, doing its basic biological functions, a lot of times those are hormones that drive that. And then proteins also act as structural molecules, muscle tissue. Okay, so that's a key function of proteins. There are multiple others, but those are really the three main functions I want you to focus on when we're talking about proteins. Now the lipids. Lipids, basically the coating of lipid on the outer surface, the fur, the feathers of marine organisms, provides them with an insulating layer. Um, it also, lipids can provide buoyancy, helps them float in water. 
<clears throat> the whale that's being harvested below, you can see that big flap of skin that's being lifted up has probably a two to three foot layer of fat underneath the skin between the skin and the muscle that acts as an insulator but it also will act as a little life jacket helps with buoyancy aspect of an animal that large so and a lot of lipids can be used for energy storage so they build up lipids use those as a reserve energy hang on to that energy until it's time to use it whether it's going into a migration or reproductive point of their life that the organism needs to use energy because it can't find food whether it's not focused on finding food or food's not available <clears throat> they burn up the reserves of energy that is stored in the form of lipids okay so some basic functions of the building blocks and then the last group the nucleic acids dna and rna are the nucleic acids DNA is the genetic code. It's a molecule that has the genetic information in it for that particular organism and <clears throat> the species in general. All right, so basic biology here, four essential building blocks of life that we will find present in all marine organisms. Now, when we talk about energy, photosynthesis is going to be a pathway used by autotrophs. So in photosynthesis, plants, algae, and other autotrophs use pigments to capture the energy in the sun. So they're self-producers. They're grabbing sunlight, they're using water, they're using carbon dioxide, they're running a series of reactions in order to produce energy in the form of glucose, sugar, carbohydrates. Oxygen is given off as a byproduct. So all of those green things in the ocean, the algaes, there's some green plants. They're running photosynthesis. We'll also talk about other organisms that run photosynthesis that are brown or red or yellow, these other colors. So photosynthesis is incredibly important as producing energy for the base of the majority of the marine ecosystem in the marine food chain. And it's estimated, again, this was the earlier lecture, but it's estimated Half of the oxygen production on Earth comes from organisms in the ocean. Okay. So now when that energy is produced and turned into glucose or some form of carbohydrate and stored, it then gets consumed by consumers, heterotrophs, things that go and eat the plants and the algaes. And these organisms break down the carbohydrates for energy through the process of cellular respiration. So hopefully this sounds familiar. Like, okay, yes, yeah, cellular respiration. It's the same pathway that I'm running right now, that you're running. Respiration uses oxygen and then that sugar and produces carbon dioxide and water as byproducts. So that's that little circle we have going, our little looping image to the right here. Sugar, glucose, and oxygen go into respiration. Respiration then produces water and carbon dioxide that goes into the autotrophs when they run photosynthesis, and it just keeps circling, keeps creating that perpetual loop if both systems are kept in balance. All right. Now, when we look at marine organisms, they require certain nutrients in order to make that conversion of carbohydrates into some other molecule. So there's certain key nutrients. Some of the top three key nutrients we want to list here. Nitrate. Nitrate is an incredibly important nutrient that is used by a lot of the producer base. High levels of nitrates can often lead to population increases and explosions, thing we call eutrophication. Second nutrient group, phosphates. Phosphates are essential for making ATP and nucleic acids, that energy, <clears throat> the prime energy source used by all life, the ATP. And then another major nutrient that we often don't think about or hear much about is a nutrient called silica. Now silica is a critical component for the shells of diatoms and radiolarians. 
little pictures down there will look like little hockey pucks or little goofy little shaped structures. Those are diatoms. And we'll talk about those in our next lecture when we talk about plankton and the marine organisms, um, the protists. Diatoms and radiolarians are unbelievably important in the marine ecosystem. So they need silica in order to make their structural shells in order to form their bodies. So if you lack silica or have a silica depletion, those populations go down. And the opposite happens if we have an influx of silica, then now all of a sudden populations go up. Okay, so when we're looking at the marine organisms, we can drop them into two basic groups. And the way we organize them is based on cellular structures or cellular composition. So the first group, prokaryotic, those are all the prokaryote cells. And then the second group, eukaryotic, those are all the eukaryotic cells. So I'm, as I go through the different um, organisms in the marine system, we'll come back and we'll look at here's the prokaryotes, what they are, what they do. We'll then start doing the same thing for the eukaryotes. All right, now types of organisms. Just briefly, the prokaryotic organisms, some key features we want to list out here and fill out. They're single-celled. They're all single-celled. Now, they may group together and form clumps and colonies, but they're still single-celled organisms. They lack a nucleus, so no nuclear envelope. The uh, DNA is looped in this thing called a nucleoid region. So on the image to the right here, you can see this over there where they have this little nucleoid region. All right, so here's our little nucleoid region for the prokaryotic organisms. Um, they have a cell wall. So the outer structure here, the cell wall, provides rigidity and structural support, protection, etc., for all these guys. And by and large, prokaryotes lack any type of <clears throat> organelles. <clears throat> they don't have the same type of cellular organelles we have in our cells. The basic structure they have is a ribosome, and then they have these folds of membranes here. So these membranes right here that I'm circling, those folds are used to run cellular respiration, to run photosynthesis, to do their basic functions. But much simpler organisms are grouped and classified in the prokaryotic category. Now, eukaryotic organisms, key things to note about these guys. Number one, let's start with the nucleus. So these guys all have a nucleus here. The nucleus contains DNA. They have lots and lots of specialized organelles. So if you go through, you could just underline a ton of different structures and organelles found in the eukaryotic cells. In order to produce energy, eukaryotic cells have mitochondria and chloroplasts. So there's an example of a chloroplast there, and there's one of our mitochondria right there. And then a lot of the eukaryotic organisms, especially marine organisms, have cilia, which are these little hair-like structures, like little tiny hairs up here. And then they will often have flagella, little tails that stick off here and little tail like structures attached to the cell. <clears throat> okay, so some of the key features we want to focus on when we're looking at eukaryotic organisms. And again, as we go into the different groups, we'll be breaking this down further and talk about specialized features that make this group different than the other group or this phylum different than that phylum and so on and how those structures adapt them to the marine environment. Okay, so the last thing to mention here in this lecture are the different levels of organization in living organisms. So we start out at the atomic level, atoms, hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, and then that builds up to molecules. Molecules combine, eventually we reach the cell level, tissues, organs, systems, individuals, populations, communities, entire ecosystems. So there's a linear flow 
of organization as we go from one level to the next within all living organisms. So we'll explore this more as we get into our second part of the lecture here.